Well, at very nearly that time, ladies and gentlemen, the Collinsville Jayhawks in the light uniform. On the floor, the Collinsville cheerleaders. And uh, to the right of your screen, in the dark uniforms, the Blue Devils of Quincy, about to settle once and for all, the number one team in Illinois high school basketball for 1965, the state championship. And if it is anything like the games we've seen leading up to it, Jack Drees, you should be in for a busy four periods of play. This is the 17th state tournament appearance for Quincy. The last time they won a state championship was back in 1934. Collinsville is making its 13th appearance in the state tournament. And they've been state champions in 1961. And the ball club has been to the state in 63, 64, and now in 1965. Two teams are reporting to their respective coaches. Cheryl Hanks of Quincy. And there you're looking at Collinsville and Virgil Fletcher. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for the championship game between Quincy and Collinsville. For the Quincy Blue Devils, number 21. Forward, 6'3", a senior, Bob McMahon. Number 35, a forward, 6'3", a senior, Gary Rotman. At center, number 41, 6'8", a senior, John Buck. Number 25, a guard, 6'2", a senior, Kurt Gentleman. And number 23, a guard, 5'9", a senior, Gary Thompson. And the coach of the Quincy Blue Devils, Cheryl Hanks. And now the starting lineup for Collinsville High. Number 30, at a guard position, six feet, a senior, Jack Darlington. Number 32, at center, 6'3", a senior, Dennis Pace. Number 34, a forward, 6'2", a senior, Harry Parker. Number 40, a guard, six feet, a senior, Steve Gowan. And number 52, a forward, 6'1", a junior, Don Berger. And the coach of the Collinsville Cahawks, Virgil Fletcher. Well, Jack Grease, that's just about it. Quincy and Collinsville ready to go for the big trophy, the state championship, 1965. And the crowd is ready, too, Jack Grease. Yes, here they are, the best of the eight finest teams we have ever seen gathered together here in state tournament play. Up goes the ball. And the tip is taken by Quincy, the Quincy Blue Devils. And there is their quarterback, Gary Thompson. As Thompson goes, so goes Quincy. And they've gone all the way to the finals here today. High pass to John Buck. He's short on the throw for the basket as he was off balance. And Collinsville takes it for the first time in the game. No score as yet. Steve Gown, the playmaker, tries to feed into the line to Dennis Pace, but it's deflected and taken over by Quincy. Gary Thompson with the ball. Bob McMahon has it now. Fades off to Gentleman. Quincy in the dark uniforms, Collinsville in the white. Gary Rotman's turnaround jump shot is off the rim, and John Buck puts it in. So Quincy takes it through to nothing lead. Quincy two, Collinsville nothing. Jack Darlington in the corner may have a chance to shoot, does, and it's two points. Jack Darlington gets a pair for Collinsville to tie the game up at two apiece.
Gentleman feeds long to Rotman. Rotman has to get away from the pressure into the back court. Collinsville in a tight off-court press, which they've used throughout the season. Tough to work through. There's a quick feed underneath to Rotman. Rotman's pass or shot rolls off the hoop, but a foul is called. Number 52 is Don Berger. And Rotman goes to the line. The ball game is tied at two apiece right now with uh, Gary Rotman of Quincy. Two shots coming, makes the first one. Quincy in front, three to two. Rotman ready to go again. Rolls off, Don Berger gets the rebound for Collinsville. Hands the ball to Steve Gowan, who brings it up the court. Quincy staying deep on defense. Quick throw to Dennis Pace, and Pace hits. First basket for Dennis Pace. Four to three, Collinsville. Dennis Pace, who needs 23 points to set a new tournament record for one man scoring in the four tournament games. Rotman whirls around, misses. Berger gets the rebound again for Collinsville. There you see two great examples of the strength of Collinsville, particularly noticeable under the boards. A stocky, muscular, strong team. Jack Darlington lets one go, high off the rim. It's grabbed by Gary Rotman for Quincy. Gary Thompson, the playmaker, and spark plug of the Quincy team has the ball. Moves it through the all-court press. Quincy in the dark uniforms, Collinsville in the white. Shot by Gentleman is partially blocked. Buck tries to get it, but it's pulled away from him by Dennis Pace, and Collinsville has the ball. They lead by one point. Four to three, five minutes to play in the first quarter. <laughs> Harry Parker feeds to Dennis Pace. It rolls off the rim. McMahon clears the boards for Quincy. Gary Thompson brings it up the middle. And a slow bounce pass is a little too slow. Dennis Pace picks it off. Collinsville has the ball again. They lead four to three. Nice fake by Pace. And he has an easy shot and it rolls off the rim. A seldom seen circumstance with Dennis Pace. Wild pass. This all-court press of Collinsville may be getting to Quincy here in the early stages of the game. If so, we can expect a timeout shortly. We'll settle the team down. From the side, Parker lets one go. The high bounce is rebounded by John Buck. Score holds at four to three. Collinsville over Quincy here in the first quarter of the game for the Illinois State Championship. Two splendid teams fought their way all the way down to the wire here. Underneath, Rotman is tied up as he tries to get the shot away. Dennis Pace capturing the ball, and it'll be a jump ball. Coming out is Kurt Gentleman going in is Marvin Sprague number 15 Marvin Sprague a 510 junior in the game for Gentleman Collinsville getting the tip his pace tips it back to Berger and once again Steve Gowan brings the ball up the court Gowan feeds high to Berger and as Berger tries to get the shot away he's fouled by McMahon Bob McMahon committing the foul. He's number 21. Don Berger goes to the line with two shots coming. Shooting for Collinsville, who lead four to three. Still four to three. That makes it Collinsville five, Quincy three. Three and a half minutes to play here in the first quarter of the game. Quincy looking for ways to get through that off-court Collinsville press. Now they've got the idea. They whip that ball around the court, keeping it moving, not allowing the defense to camp on them. 
Gary Thompson gets clear for a shot, and there he goes. This boy is something else, too. 57 points in three games so far. And it ties up the ball game at five apiece. From the side, Darlington's shot is an in and outer. Rebound finally grabbed by McMahon for Quincy. Sprague brings it up the court. Gary Thompson lets another one go and hits again. If Gary Thompson heats up, watch out Collinsville. This is the young man that has pulled Quincy out of the fire in the two previous games we've seen here at Champaign-Urbana. And a long one-hander from the circle tried by Gowan finally uh, trickles out of bounds on the far side of the court. Last touch by Collinsville. It'll be brought in by Quincy. McMahon goes into the line but has the ball batted out of his uh, attempt to dribble by Dennis Pace picked up by Collinsville and Steve Gowan now comes across the middle Jack Darlington lofts one across court to Parker back to Gowan now now Darlington is clear his shot is good and counts whistle blows foul on number 15 is Sprague Jack Darlington is hit on his second basket Ball game is tied again at seven all. And this could be a three point play. And Darlington hits. Five points for Jack Darlington. Collinsville goes in the lead, eight to seven. Quincy with the ball. Quincy in the blue uniforms, dark on your screen against the white shirted Collinsville Kayhawk. McMahon lets one go. A fadeaway jump shot that swishes the Nets. Quincy 9, Collinsville 8, Collinsville with the ball. This the final game. From this game comes the Illinois State Champion for 1965. A tense assembly hall here in Champaign-Urbana. High school teams playing with nigh incredible poise as they move this ball skillfully against each other. Underneath, Berger is clear and it's in there. Don Berger scores. Collinsville regains the lead. It's 10 to 9 and seesaw. Sprague lets go with a long one and look at these kids shoot. That was Marvin Sprague. 11 to 10, Quincy. Gowan and Darlington working the backcourt for Collinsville and Darlington's shot is rebounded by Gary Thompson. Quincy has the ball. Thompson drives in under, feeds back, but the pass attempted for Rotman was picked off again by Dennis Pace. Pace has scored only two points so far in this game. He needs 23 for a new tournament record. They're keeping two men on Pace. Berger is clear, goes in. That's his own rebound up there, and then it goes off into the corner where John Buck takes it. The end of the quarter. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Collinsville 10, Quincy 11. Now here's Vince Lloyd. With me now is Mayor Norm Weber of Collinsville, and Mayor Weber, congratulations on an excellent basketball team representing your city, and tell us a little bit, if you will, about the plans for welcoming your team back to Collinsville. Thank you very much, Vince. Glad to talk to our fine fans back home who haven't been as fortunate as we to be here. There's going to be a big time in the hometown tomorrow. The team will get home at approximately somewhere between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. The boys will have dinner and will have time to go to church tomorrow morning. And the parade route, please pay attention to this, please, because we want you to be there and we know you will want to be there. We will pick up the team on the outskirts of Maryville, Illinois. They will then go past the North Junior High, past the high school, all the way down Vandalia Street, past the Catholic Church, and turn right. And there we'll go to the Herald, past the Herald, and all the way down to Jefferson, where we'll turn to the left, down Main Street, and back to the high school. Mayor Weber, thank you very much. Quincy with the ball. 
Foul call is on uh, Parker. Harry Parker for Collinsville, number 34. And there is the granddaughter of Virgil Fletcher, the Collinsville coach. Meantime, at the line, Bob McMahon drops in the free throw. And Quincy leads 12 to 10. Again, Gowan shoots. Short, coming down off the front of the rim. The rebound grab there. Made by Gentleman, who's come back into the game. Gary Thompson moving from the backcourt into the corner, but can't get clear. Sprague is clear, about 25 feet away. It rolls off. And a foul call against John Buck as Dennis Pace went up for the rebound. This 58th Illinois High School Association basketball tournament being brought to you by your friends and neighbors at Illinois Bell. Be sure to stay with us at halftime to learn how some of the parents and girlfriends of these championship contenders feel about the game. Dennis Pace, who scored two points so far in the game, drops it in. 12 to 11. Quincy leading Collinsville. And Quincy has the ball. Bob McMahon pops in a one-hander to make it 14 to 11 in favor of Quincy. Collinsville, Dennis Pace, fake, and then in. And that one will count. Basket counts. Foul is against Gentleman. So it's now 14 to 13 with Dennis Pace there ready for the free throw that can tie the game up. And he does. Six points for Pace. Ball game tied at 14 all here in the second quarter. Long pass comes down to John Buck. He feeds away from the pressure. Now Sprague and uh, Gary Thompson working in the backcourt. Thompson whistles one into McMahon, but it's off his fingertips as the pass surprised him a bit. Steve Gowan will bring it in now, throwing it in to Jack Darlington, and those two will bring it up for Collinsville. Tight two three zone is forcing them to shoot from out in front but they are answering with some terrific shooting that was Jack Darlington Collinsville leads 16 to 14 Collinsville now again moving into a tighter off court press Collinsville 16 Quincy 14 Buck gets it and pops it in six foot eight inch John Buck ties up the game at 16 all. Collinsville with it now as Gowan comes down into the circle. Parker from the side has one. Harry Parker gets his first basket. A deadly outside shooter and Collinsville leads 18 to 16. Buck couldn't hold on to the long pass. Collinsville will take it in out of bounds. Collinsville leading 18 to 16 and gets the break of getting the ball without allowing Quincy a shot. These are key moments in a basketball game. And the opposition cannot get a shot. But it still belongs to Collinsville as the ball was wrestled away from Berger. But wrestled out of bounds. Steve Gowan now standing beyond the end line. Jack Darlington from the side, and it rims and comes out. Gary Thompson speeding up the court, two on one. Thompson loses track of the ball. Pops it up there. The ball is uh, batted out of bounds by Thompson. So it belongs to Collinsville. Collinsville 18, Quincy 16. Don Berger in the corner. Into Dennis Pace's turnaround jump shot. 
missing and rebounded by Marvin Sprague for Quincy. Bob McMahon tied up at the line and a foul call. Jack Darlington, number 30, called for the foul. This telecast, the Illinois High School Association basketball tournament is being brought to you by the men and women of Illinois Bell Telephone. Here's Bob McMahon at the line with the score at 18 to 16, favor of Collinsville. One shot, McMahon makes it. And it is 18 to 17, a little less than four and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. The third place game tonight won by Marshall, 66 to 59 over Thornton. Steve Gowan lets one go, misses. Buck cradles the rebound, they pass it out to Sprague who loses it coming up the court and Collinsville has it again. So again, Collinsville pulls off the critical defensive maneuver of stopping a shot by Quincy. Collinsville, a tough defense, all court press almost constant with him. Underneath to Berger, he saved it. Great save by Berger. From the side, Harry Parker lets one go. And as it came off the rim, it bounded up and hit the supporting cables above the backboard, which gives it to Quincy out of bounds automatically. Collinsville 18, Quincy 17. A little better than three and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. This for the state championship of Illinois in 1965. And Collinsville gets the ball again. From the sidelines, Coach Virgil Flesher says, let's call a timeout. Collinsville calls time. They lead 18 to 17, and they are doing a great job of defensing Quincy at the moment. Tom? Jack, this Quincy ball club is probably closer than they expected to be, and I don't know if they know what to do with it. They are the comeback fourth quarter kids. They live in the fourth period, and they were down by 17 points in a ball game yesterday. They were down today, came on to win a very, very good ball game. And uh, I don't know as how they know what to do when they're only one point back here. And we've got 326 to play, but they're an excellent basketball team. And if they're this close when the fourth quarter is on, Collinsville may have their hands full. 18 to 17, Collinsville leading Quincy by a point with three minutes and 26 seconds left to play in the second quarter. Collinsville will bring the ball into play from out of bounds. Gowan, Jack Darlington bring it down. This is Steve Gowan with the ball. Quincy really sinking into a deep zone. They apparently are ready to take their chances with uh, Collinsville's outside shooting. They drop in very deep. Dennis Pace, nice fake up in the air. Fadeaway jump shot is home. Eight points for Dennis Pace. Collinsville leads 20 to 17. Dennis Pace needs 23 points for a state tournament record. Quick pass to McMahon is a little too quick for him. Goes out of his hands to be taken by Collinsville. Collinsville continues to get the ball without Quincy able to get off the shot. And uh, Steve Gowan moves across toward the sidelines. A foul call on number 15, Marvin Spring. A one and one foul now as the bonus shot is in. Gowan sinks the free throw. It's 21 to 17. And now the bonus shot. Collinsville 22, Quincy 17. Quincy bringing the ball up the court. And once again, Quincy is prevented from getting the shot away. This one, however, doesn't wind up a total loss. It's a jump ball and a substitute coming in. Gary Rotman coming back, replacing Kurt Gentleman. Gary Rotman back in the game. McMahon and Darlington jumping at the free throw line with Darlington getting the tip for Quincy. Sprague retrieving the ball. Quincy still in possession. Gary Thompson uh, has the ball knocked out of his hands on an attempted dribble around the corner. Knocked out by Dennis Pace. Thompson feeds deep into the backcourt to try and set things up once again. A 1-2-2 zone being used by Collinsville. A 2-3 zone is used by Quincy and it's a deep one. 
McMahon uh, and a soft pass aimed for Rotman has it picked off by Jack Darlington and Gowan comes up the court with the ball. Quincy having great difficulty against the Collinville defense. Pace shot is missed. Pace gets the rebound. Fakes lets her go off the rim again. Rebound again. This time Pace sinks it. Dennis Pace to paraphrase the ancient Mariner sinketh one of three. Collinsville 24, Quincy 17. Gary Thompson going in as a whistle blows and a foul call against Steve Gowan. Gary Thompson will go to the line and shoot one. That's the first foul on Steve Gowan. Bonus rule not yet in effect on Quincy's foul shooting. Twenty-four to eighteen. Collinsville out ahead. <laughs> Underneath to Don Berger, his layup is partially deflected by McMahon. He was all right on that because the ball hadn't crossed the center line. The player can go across and come back. The ball cannot. Without being touched by the other team. And McMahon on a fadeaway jump shot pops one in. That's eight points for Bob McMahon. And the score is 24 to 20 now as Quincy has come back to four points away from Collinsville. This really is, as Tom Kelly was mentioning, more the area of scoring that Quincy has gotten used to. Being behind through much or most or almost all of the game, then coming with a late rush. Harry Parker, it's off the rim. The rebound is grabbed over there by Darlington. And as Darlington tries to shoot, the half comes to an end. And at the half, the score is Collinsville 24, Quincy 20. A four point margin between these two fine teams fighting for the state championship of 1965. Collinsville and Quincy. Third place went to Marshall, 66 to 59 over Thornton. At halftime, we have a series of very interesting interviews lined up for you. That'll come right after my wrap up on the first half of the championship game. First, here are Marilyn and Ed. The games have been so exciting this yes. whole weekend, and it's been wonderful to Ooh. have an opportunity to talk with the players and the coaches and some of the cheerleaders, too. Yes, some great people out here. You know, they're a great asset to Illinois. Many other things this state can take pride in, too. Illinois Bell talks about some of them in a new series of advertisements. Did you know that Illinois leads 48 other states in the number of PhDs awarded each year? or that one out of every five doctors in the entire United States received all or part of his training in a medical school or a hospital right here in Illinois. These are just some of the facts of leadership. There are many more. All of them show great promise for this state. And that is precisely the theme of this series of public service advertisements now appearing throughout the state, developed and sponsored by Illinois Bell. Simply stated, they all say one thing, Take pride in the promise of Illinois. Take pride, because our children will inherit a bright future, a future based on the adventures of our own great people and their discoveries, the speed of light, the jet stream, the control of atomic energy. Take pride in the present, in all the aerospace and research facilities that make Illinois uniquely qualified to meet the challenges of the space age. Take pride and that our children will have the opportunity to work and to play in this land of promise. We say, take pride to those who would come and build in this state. For here lies an abundance of technical and scientific talent. We say, take pride to all those now searching for a place where their hopes and aspirations can be fulfilled. And we say, take pride so that this state continues to grow and prosper. 
And this is essential if our own business is to grow and prosper too. We invite you to write for this free booklet. It contains a series of eight advertisements describing why you should take pride in the promise of Illinois. And we ask you to pass these messages along so all shall know that Illinois has the promise and the means to fulfill it. Well, it's halftime in the game between Collinsville and Quincy for the 1965 Illinois State Championship. Collinsville is out in front by a 24 to 20 score. The difference between the teams is that Quincy has not been able to get the shooting effort off that Collinsville has. Collinsville has frequently stymied Quincy, prevented them from getting a shot away, intercepting passes. Their all-court press has been bothering Quincy a great deal and has particularly hampered the moves of Gary Thompson, their quarterback and playmaker. Chief score for Collinsville, Dennis Pace with 10 points. If he gets 23 points, he sets a new tournament individual scoring record. Behind him comes Jack Darlington, who has hit for a total of seven points in the first half. Scoring for Quincy, Bob McMahon has hit on eight. John Buck has hit for two baskets, a total of four points. Gary Thompson has come in with a total of five points. 24 to 20, the halftime score. Collinsville winning over Quincy at the half. With the championship uh, still to be decided, Marilyn, Ed, and Tom have gone into the crowd to seek out vitally interested followers of the contending teams to determine their viewpoints on the possible outcome of the tournament. Let's switch first to Ed. I have two uh, very proud and I would guess nervous ladies here, the mothers of two of our players. This is Mrs. Buck, mother of John Buck, who's been doing such a great job on those rebounds. How are you, Miss Buck? Fine, thank you. I see where he gets his height. How tall is he? Uh, he's 6'8". And how tall are you? I'm 5'10 and a half. 5'10 and a half. You are tall, lady. And this is the mother of Dennis Pace, the, the young man who may, we hope, uh, break this record here. No matter who wins tonight, we'd like to see that record oh, broken. Sure how do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, we're real proud of him. <laughs> Did it seem to bother him today at all as he was getting close to the possibility? I don't think so. He don't seem like he gets too nervous. Mm -hmm. Did he talk about it a little long? And not too much. Huh? No. He doesn't talk too much. Is he normally that kind of a boy? He's more on a quiet side. Yeah. Yes, he's more on a quiet side. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, what do you normally do in the course of uh, uh, a season? Do you follow uh, the teams pretty closely? Oh, yes, we yeah. do. Uh -huh. You're an active basketball oh, mother. We, go. <laughs> we have to say goodbye. We want to thank you very much to take time to talk. And good luck to you in the second half and also to you in the second half. We do hope your son breaks that record oh, tonight. Oh, thank you. Now let's get back to Marilyn, who has a couple of uh, girlfriends she'd like you to meet. We have the most enthusiastic fans it would be possible to find outside of parents, perhaps, and these are the girlfriends of Don Berger and Bob McMahon. And your name is? Elaine Pollock. And you're the girlfriend of Don Berger, is that yes. right? Yes, yes. And your name is? Elaine Grenock. And you're the girlfriend of Bob McMahon. Okay. You must be very proud of him. I sure am. He is leading now in the scoring after the first half, isn't that right? Yes, that's correct. And I, I noticed you came kind of limping in here, and uh, was that cheering during a game that you broke your toe? No, that was in gym class. <laughs> Oh, then it wasn't at a game. No, it wasn't. And how, and how about you, Elaine? Um, as far as the pressure on a, on a basketball player, how much pressure has there been during the season? Well, during the season, there hasn't been too much, but now I've noticed a lot, of more uh, a lot of pressure on him during these games. I guess these are the games that really count. Yes, I'm sure. When you find that you're out on a date, do the boys kind of gather together and discuss the plays? No, not too much when we're out. Well, it's a very close game, and we have the two girls here who are now going to be returning to cheer as we go back and join the game also. And now we'll go back to Tom Kelly. He has two guests that he'd like to introduce. Thank you, Marilyn. Here at the half, it's 24 to 20 with Collinsville leading Quincy, and I have two very proud gentlemen standing with me. For they are fathers of two of the stars in this ball game. On my left is Mr. Matt Buck of Quincy, whose boy John Stands just about 6'9", and I guess I know who he favors, Matt. Well, uh, we come from uh, real tall people, and John's following along in the line of the family. Well, boy, he certainly is. It's a tall stand of timber over there. I got another one coming along, too, Tom. How big's he? Well, he's uh, about five, almost 5'10", five, and he's in seventh grade in school, and uh, he's a pretty good shooter, too. You must have to live in a two-story house, Matt, to have youngsters that tall. We have all long beds, Tom. <laughs> And the gentleman on my right ought to be just as pleased as Punch. He's the father of Dennis Pace, one of the finest basketball players this tournament has seen. Stephen Pace, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, you must be pretty pleased about this boy of yours. Well, who wouldn't be? I mean, <laughs> I, words fail me right now. I don't know what to say. I'm very proud of him, and he, he's done it all on his own. I mean, kids worked hard. 
I guess you deserve it. You work hard for something, you deserve it. All right, gentlemen, who's going to win this ball game? Mr. Buck? Well, we'd like to have it come out for Quincy. How about you, Mr. Pace? It's got to be Collinsville. Got to be Collinsville. We'll let the boys decide. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck to you and to your sons. Let's get back to Tournament Central. Well, it's nearly time to resume our championship game. Jack Threese is on his way back to game side to bring it to you. Right now, let's switch back to Ed and Marilyn. G is in her element, holding a top-level strategy session. The prom, the game, the new math teacher. These are weighty matters. They require plenty of discussion and plenty of waiting for the rest of the family and for others trying to call you. That's no fun. Here's a suggestion from Illinois Bell that'll help you solve telephone tie-ups. It's the new two-line family plan. If one telephone line is being used, just twist the button and you're ready to receive or make your call. The two-line plan gives you two telephones, two separate telephone lines. You can talk on either line from either phone. Even hold calls on the first line while you use the second. The privacy and the convenience of this service are available for about 25% less than it cost before. So, to turn off telephone tie-ups, just call your Illinois Bell service representative or ask your telephone man. And now we're moments away from the beginning of the second half. Collinsville leading Quincy 24 to 20. The winner of this game will be the 1965 Illinois State High School basketball champion. I'm sure you can appreciate the tension that builds up with these teams, with their followers. Seems to almost pressure a little bit more height from the very high dome ceiling of the assembly hall here at Champaign-Urbana. But the amazing thing about this tournament year after year is the nigh incredible poise that these youngsters show in playing this game and the almost unbelievable skill that they display. And this year particularly, this quarterfinal round that brought eight teams known as the Elite Eight down here for the finale of this year's championship tournament produced the finest quarterfinal round I can remember seeing in 13 years of covering this tournament. And he, there we watch the best of that great group of eight teams. These are the two that fought them all off and worked their way laboriously through the bracketing to get to this final round of play tonight. This is it. This is the big one for the coveted championship trophy and also for the trophy nobody wants to win, second place. Of course, after the tears are shed and the disappointment is healed, that second place trophy looms very big as indeed does just being here to be one of the eight teams that makes it to the state tournament finale is a tremendous achievement. And now for the center jump, Collinsville 24, Quincy 20, Collinsville getting the tip. Collinsville bigger, stronger, tougher defensively, but Quincy doggedly determined, staying within range at all times. They're down by four points. Collinsville's uh, shot attempt goes out of bounds. Harry Parker attempting from the side, misses the rim. Collinsville in the all-court press, the score holding a 24 to 20, and Quincy has the ball. Gary Thompson, Bob McMahon, shot by Marvin Sprague is short, and the rebound hops into the lap of Jack Darlington. Now Steve Gowan brings it up the court. And the intercept by Quincy. Gary Thompson moves on a three on two. Feeds to Sprague. Sprague fakes and puts it in. Very nice play by Marvin Sprague. Five foot ten inch junior. And it's 24 to 22 with the Collinsville lead cut to two points. And his pace whips one over to Harry Parker. His looper is good. Harry Parker drilling one to make it 26 to 22. Collinsville and Quincy has the ball. Sprague moving up to the press, but not through it as yet. Now Gary Thompson moves to the center line, is trapped there. And Collinsville has the ball as Dennis Pace steals it from Gary Rotman. This has been one of the critical points of the game for Quincy, their inability to get off a shot when they get the ball. Dennis Pace, turnaround jump shot, he's short. Don Berger underneath, follows it up. 28 to 22, Collinsville. 
Six minutes and 15 seconds to play in the third quarter of the game. Thompson whips one to McMahon. Cross court to Sprague. Timeout for Quincy. Score, Collinsville 28, Quincy 22. Six minutes, eight seconds left to play in the third quarter. Tom Kelly. But you are, Jack Grays. 6.08 it is to go in period number three for the big trophy. Collinsville out in front of Quincy 28 to 22. Collinsville Ball Club held the state championship in 1961. Virgil Fletcher brought the ball club here to Champaign-Urbana in 63 and 64 and again this year 65. He's called it a dedicated team, a team that has surprised him and I'm sure it's been a pleasant surprise. Darlington being the only veteran. This youngster Pace who gives evidence of becoming the new scoring champ in tournament play. I think Jack Reese had something like 48 points all of last year as a performer. Well, the improvement has been phenomenal. He now has 10 points. He hasn't scored yet in the second half. He needs 13 more for a new record or, and 12 more to tie. 23 points for this game would give him a new record. Gary Thompson moving into the corner. Look at that tough Collinsville defense. From far out, the shot attempt by Kurt Gendeman rims off and is taken by Collinsville on the rebound. Then his pace whips underneath to Don Berger, rolls off the hoop. Berger is in a scramble with Bob McMahon, and it'll be a jump ball at the free throw line. Any moment now, we can expect to see that Quincy defense step up the pressure. They're giving Collinsville with the lead plenty of shooting and operating time. And that time will shortly get precious to Quincy. Gentleman feeds in to Gary Thompson. Nice pass off, but the play is halted as a foul is called against Steve Gow. Jack, how long has it been since you've seen a fellow the size of Quincy's Thompson 5'9 in there playing the post? And he goes in there with the big fella. It's two personals on God. <laughs> Gary Thompson pops in his free throw to make it 28 to 23 as we have a substitute coming in. Number 33 for Quincy is now in the ballgame, Jim Jenkins, as Collegeville brings it across the court. Darlington from the side, it's two. Jack Darlington scores his ninth point. Collinsville 30, Quincy 23. Collinsville holding with the all-court press, keeping things very tough on Quincy defensively. Sprague lets it go. It's a little short. Rebounded underneath, and the rebound goes over. Buck goes up in the air, still tipping at it. That basket will not count. He was fouled on the way up by Dennis Pace. He will shoot two. Or excuse me, the foul was on Gowan. Steve Gowan. That's three personals on Gowan. He's picked up two in a hurry here. John Buck misses his first of two. Score holding at 30 to 23. In 30 to 24, Collinsville leading Quincy. Four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter of play. Jack Darlington again from the side, and again it's two points. Jack Darlington, deadly from the corner, moves the score to 32 to 24, favor of Collinsville. Quincy calls for a timeout. And with the score, Collinsville 32, Quincy 24. Timeout is taken in the third quarter. Marilyn, I want to remind our viewers that following this final game of the 1965 tournament, we'll have coverage of the trophy presentation. That's right, Ed. The presentation of the championship trophy is the real climax of this basketball tournament. Okay, now let's get back to Jack Drees. <laughs> Collinsville cheerleaders on the floor leaving the scene now as their counterparts from Quincy move into the limelight. Including my little girlfriend Chris 
That's all she'll tell me, just Chris. The little lady wouldn't offer you her uh, last name, Jack? Just no, Chris, huh? not a thing. However, she's back next year, and I'm back next year. Maybe I can pursue <laughs> it a little farther. Quincy with the ball. <laughs> Marvin Sprague lets one go. Rolls off the rim. And we have got Chair in there now. Harry Chair has moved into the center position, relieving John Buck. He got that rebound. He's number 51. Goes up in the air as his opponent comes down. Is fouled by Dennis Pace. Was fouled before he got the shot away, and he will have one shot coming. Harry Chair, number 51, six foot four inch senior. McMain bangs it into the backcourt, and Quincy holds onto the ball. They trail by eight points. Sprague lets go another one. Again, it's off the rim. Again, Cher goes up for the rebound. Rolls off the rim, and a foul is called this time against Berger. And Cher goes again to the free throw line. 52. Don Berger. That's his second personal foul. Two shots this time, and Cher gets the first one in. Makes it 32-25. Favor of Collinsville. Chair shooting for Quincy. And he has two. 32-26. Collinsville has the ball. And Quincy now, as we've been expecting them to, goes into the press and intercepts. Kurt Geneman with the ball. Beats to Sprague. Sprague has it roll off the hoop. Bad timing on the jump. Gives the ball to Collinsville. Harry Parker lets go. Shot misses with little Gary Thompson coming up with the ball. He breaks loose down the sidelines. Now Collinsville defense catches up and they're two-timing Gary Thompson. Two-timing a little enthusiastically. Dennis Pace draws a foul. Two fouls on Dennis Pace as Gary Thompson goes to the line. And Thompson hits. Now the bonus shot. 32-27. Score holds at 32-27, favor of Collinsville. And again, Quincy intercepts, but that time Bob McMain established contact with Dennis Pace as he flew through the air to get at the ball, and it's a foul. Dennis Pace goes to the line. Dennis Pace has been held scoreless here in the second half. Collinsville calls for a timeout. Dennis Pace, who needs 23 points to set a new tournament record for individual scoring, has not scored a point in the second half. He finished up the first half with a total of 10. The score is 32 to 27. Collinsville over Quincy with two minutes and 48 seconds left in the third quarter. Tom, I mentioned Collins, uh, Jack, I mentioned Collinsville and their last tournament win in 61 and how Virgil Fletcher's had his club here the last three years. Cheryl Hanks, Quincy Blue Devils are making their 17th state tournament appearance here at Champaign-Urbana. They won the state championship in 1934. But they haven't had one since. And it's been a long dry spell for the Blue Devils is the way they were telling me a while ago. And they'd like very much to take the big trophy back over into the western and southwestern part of the state of Illinois. So we'll see what happens. Here's Pace at the line as Collinsville leads 32-27. Dennis Pace trying to get the lid off that basket here in the second half. Still can't make a point in the second half. And Quincy gets the ball once again. Quincy must be said to have a great chance to win this title game. They have been dominated by Collinsville. They have frequently had shots taken away from. Here's McMahon on a turnaround jump, and he puts it in. Bob McMahon. Collinsville has been out muscling them under the boards, but they stay right there in the ballgame. 32 to 29 now, as Quincy is only three points behind. And the same could be said of Quincy in their previous games. There was no way they could win, but they did. And from the side, Harry Parker 
parks one through. A corner shot that makes it 34 to 29, and that was a critical basket for Collinsville. They needed one right about then. Two splendid teams playing in this final game. Gary Thompson lets one go. Watch it if this young fella heats up. 34 to 31. Gary Thompson has shown the ability to single-handedly change the complexion of a game, even as Dennis Pace can do it for Collinsville. Berger underneath feeds to Pace. His fadeaway jump shot is in and out. He still can't buy a point. He was fouled on that one by Chair. Harry Chair, number 51, committing the foul. And up on the line goes Dennis Pace. Into the game, John Buck. Returning, substituting for Harry Chair. Dennis Pace. Looking for his first point in the second half. And gets it. Tom, I know he's glad to see that one. <laughs> it's like getting an olive out of a jar, Jack. The first one is always the toughest. And with that, Pace follows it up with a second free throw to make it 36 to 31. Quincy moving now against the all-court press. Kurt Gentleman lets go with a fast shot and puts it right through the hoop. First basket for Gentleman tonight. 36 to 33 the score. Now Collinsville has only a three-point lead. Dennis Pace lets it go. It rolls off the side. Berger underneath. That will not count. Foul called on Gentleman, number 25, and Don Berger will go to the line. Jack, there isn't enough pressure on a boy like Pace playing in a championship ball game, but there hangs those 23 points awaiting a new scoring champion. It must be a tremendous amount of, of pressure on the young man. Berger's free throw makes it 37 to 33, increasing the Collinsville lead to four points. A minute and four seconds left to play in the third quarter of the game. Craig into the corner to McMahon, and a long cross-court pass to Gentleman. Gentleman's shot is deflected on a nice defensive play by Jack Darlington, number 30 at the bottom of your picture. 45 seconds. We're nearing the end of the third quarter. Pace turns around, and there he goes. Dennis Pace hits. 14 points for Pace, 39 to 33. 30 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Quincy wants to get the last shot. Gary Thompson underneath, and he flips an underhanded shot in the general direction of the basket to draw a foul and puts a little pressure on Mr. Pace. That's three personals for Dennis Pace. Jack, uh, your friends and fans and viewers looking in know that you are 6'6", and I called your attention. This little fella, Thompson, is playing the post, and he is only 5'9", an amazing little basketball player. That's 10 points for Thompson. That one rolls off. Don uh, Berger getting it for Collinsville. Ten seconds and Berger scores. Don Berger taking the feed from Dennis Pace. Hurried shot at the end of the uh, quarter. It's far short as the gun sounds, and that's the end of the third quarter with the score, Collinsville 40, Quincy 34. Now here's Vince Lloyd. With me now is Mayor Wes Olson of Quincy, Illinois, who not only has been battling laryngitis this week, but hasn't been helping at all with his cheering here the last couple of days. Congratulations on your team, Mayor, and what are the plans for welcoming them back to Quincy? Well, of course, Right now, Quincy's at a point where we like to have them about six points behind going into the fourth quarter. And we're going to plan the biggest celebration that uh, any basketball team ever had in Quincy. The team plans to leave here about 10.30 tomorrow and arrive in Quincy around 3 o'clock. Now, we expect the team to be in Liberty about 2.30, and we would like police escort at Liberty, and we'll have it there. And as many people as can should be in Liberty, and then we'll meet them with the fire department at 30th and Broadway, and a parade through town and then back out to the high school. Thank you very much, Mayor Olson of Quincy. Time's up. Now back to Jack Trees. Scoreboard has been corrected to 
Collinsville 41, Quincy 34. So as we come now into the period of decision, Collinsville leads by seven points, and they're coming to the point where Quincy is the toughest. Eight minutes away from the 1965 state championship, barring an overtime demand. Jack, tournament fans remember that this Quincy team came from a big deficit to beat Moline, then came our to win that ball game in this afternoon. They also came from behind to win. Jack Darlington hitting. That's 13 points for Darlington. 43 to 34 now the score. Gary Thompson tied up. Be a jump ball, and that's a tough break for Quincy. But I would not be surprised by what Gary Thompson can jump pretty well, too. He does everything else. Let's see if he can out jump his taller opponent, Steve Gowan. They'll have to jump it again. And he does. Nice save. Tim Miles has come in the ball game. He's number 45 for Quincy. Shot by Marvin Sprague. That was no good, but underneath a foul call against Jim Jenkins, number 33. On the line is Don Berger, Collinsville leading 43 to 31, or to 34, excuse me, 43 to 34. And Berger puts it through. Ten points now is the Collinsville lead. A little better than seven minutes to play. Tim Miles with the ball. Collinsville press is really bugging him now. Gary Thompson retrieves his attempt to pass over the uh, Collinsville press and as he does so he is fouled by Jack Darlington number 30 and now back in the ball game come McMahon number 21 and number five, 25 Kurt Gendeman Gary Thompson is at the free throw line six minutes and 55 seconds left to play free throwers in 44-35. Bonus shot. Rolls off. Dennis Pace gets it. Has it stolen by Bob McMahon. Over to Gary Thompson. And Kurt Gentleman hitting from outside. He pumps one in from about 22 feet away, and it's 44 to 37. Gowan finally rolls the ball in the backcourt. It's grabbed there by Gary Thompson. He's underneath loose and home. Gary Thompson hits, and it's 44 to 39. And palming the ball on the dribble against Dennis Pace gives the ball to Quincy out of bounds. And boy, do they call timeout in a hurry at the Collinsville bench. Timeout in the fourth quarter of this championship game with the score Collinsville 44, Quincy 39. Well, this is it, Marilyn, what the fighting's all about. The trophy the champions will take back to their school. Stay with us following this final game for the dramatic presentation of this trophy. Now, let's get right back to this game. Strategy sessions going on in front of both benches, and this is the moment when Collinsville, a steady-as-a-rock team, will be called upon to display all its poise because Quincy is on one of its explosive tournament scoring sprees. Quincy now has caught fire, which they seem to be able to do once or twice in every game, and up till now, it's come in a moment that resulted in victory. Whether or not they'll be able to do this against this strong and steady Collinsville team remains to be seen. But it was a very propitious timeout called by Collinsville to try and slow down this Quincy attack. Gentleman with the ball. McMahon now over in the corner. Sprague gets the shot away, and it's in there. 44 to 41. Here comes Quincy again. 
Collinsville now needs a basket. They're up against an all-court press being turned loose on them by Quincy. Parker gets the shot away and cans it. Harry Parker may have made the biggest basket of the night. 46 to 41. Five minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the game. Collinsville out in front by five. Gendeman is loose. Rolls off the rim. Jump ball. Or no foul call. Foul call and it's called against Gendeman. Pushing as he scrambled for that ball. Tom? Jack, I'm sure your viewers looked in and saw that very odd moment in basketball when the ball just falls all by itself and nobody seems to want to go near it. Then suddenly, everybody dives on it like it was a loose $10 bill. All right, at the line is Jack Darlington with a one and one. He makes the first one, so he gets the bonus shot. 47. Foul call and it's called against Gendeman. Pushing as he scrambled for that ball, Tom. Jack, I'm sure your viewers looked in and saw that very odd moment in basketball when the ball just falls all by itself and nobody seems to want to go near it. Then suddenly, everybody dives on it like it was a loose $10 bill. All right, at the line is Jack Darlington with a one and one. He makes the first one, so he gets the bonus shot. 47 to 41. That makes it 48. 48 for Collinsville, 41 for Quincy. Collinsville pressing as Quincy tries to get the ball across the center line. Gendeman shot, bounds away, but a foul call against Harry Parker. So Gendeman will go to the line. That's two for Parker. Kurt Gentleman at the line with two shots coming, fouled in the act of shooting, and Gentleman cans the first one. Five points for Gentleman, 48 to 42. That one misses, rebounded by Collinsville. Jack Darlington crowded over to the line, passes away from the pressure. Here is Steve Gown, the playmaker for Collinsville. And the Quincy defense gets the ball, but a bad pass gives it back to Gowan and Collinsville. <laughs> Collinsville now waiting for the percentage shot. And the driving shot by Darlington is the percentage shot. 50 to 42. Tom, I think Dennis Pace can forget about setting a record. He is really snugly guarded by Quincy. Timeout is called by Quincy. But I don't think he cares much if his team can hold this lead and get that big trophy. I think that's a fair assumption, Jack. I think we've uh, talked a good deal about Dennis Pace, his fine performances, and well, we should. But I'm impressed every game with this Jack Darlington, the captain of the Collinsville Cahawks. We saw him just a moment ago, and it appeared that the Cahawks were being hard-pressed by this very good Quincy club. Come out of the corner and drive for a neat two-pointer. He brings the ball up the floor. He's cool, and he's poised. He's the captain of the team. Jack Darlington, number 30. He's a very fine high school basketball guard, and he's put on a fine state tournament appearance here at Champaign-Urbana. Tom, hasn't that been the factor in this tournament, the individual excellence that's been displayed? There have been some outstanding individual performers. I can think back just to a name, Kaberski, the youngster who performed so very, very well in a losing quarterfinal effort yesterday. A fine basketball player. Here we go. Four minutes and 29 seconds to go. 50-42 the score. Collinsville in front by eight. Collinsville's got to get their shots away in a hurry. They have not the luxury of time. Gary Thompson finally comes up with that ball. Thompson's fadeaway jump shot. In and out. And the rebound to Collinsville. Steve Gowan with the ball. I'm not sure Steve Gowan has made a basket in the tournament. He shoots very seldom, but is a fine playmaker and a very strong defensive man and very tough at the free throw line. They don't have him in there for his shooting, but he is a steadying influence. That one, however, went awry. And here's Gary Thompson with the ball for Quincy going underneath and 
He, the shot is blocked, and it will be a jump ball. The shot is blocked. Dennis Pace, who blocked it, gets in there with little Gary Thompson. Dennis Pace, 6'3". Gary Thompson, 5'9". Now they switch him around. Don Berger is only 6'2", a little more of a match. <laughs> Comes in, that's McMahon with the ball, goes underneath, and as he tries to get to the basket, he is hit by Dennis Pace, and that's four. Four personal fouls for Dennis Pace. One more, and he has left the ball game. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go. There it is, Collinsville, 50 to 42. McMahon marks the ball. 11 points for Bob McMahon, 50 to 43. And he hits again to make it 50 to 44. A six point spread now. Collinsville has the lead. Don Berger underneath, and he has the easy layup, puts it in. 52 to 44. Collinsville gets it again. Three minutes to play. Collinsville now has Quincy chasing after the ball. As they whip the passes long across court, then into the backcourt. Dennis Pace on his turnaround shot is short. McMahon comes up with the ball, has trouble with the Collinsville press, then feeds off to Gary Thompson. Long into the corner to Sprague. He better shoot. Time is running out. McMahon goes up and hits. Bob McMahon comes through. 14 points for McMahon. And Quincy gets it again. Kurt Gittleman putting the ball through on a layup, and here we go again with his team. Collinsville calls for a timeout to steady down once more. This championship game of the high school basketball tournament being brought to you by the men and women of Illinois Bell Telephone. Two minutes and nine seconds left. Every time Quincy starts one of those explosive bursts, Collinsville quickly and wisely calls for timeout. Four points the difference. Quincy has gotten this far in the tournament coming from behind Tom, but it's a different story tonight so far. Collinsville seems to be able to maintain their poise. Quincy Ball Club Jack lives in the fourth quarter, down by 17 to Decatur. They won in the fourth period. They were trailing Thornton, and they managed to beat Thornton this afternoon, and they've been trailing this good Collinsville Ball Club ever since the end of the first period. But they keep coming on and coming on, and I, they're the comeback kids, and they love the fourth quarter. If they can unnerve this cool, steady Collinsville ball club, they'll have done something. 52-48, 2.09 to play. Collinsville ahead, and Collinsville has the ball. Jack? Quincy pressing. Collinsville now and 10 times using up time. Whistle blows, foul call on number 15, Sprague. Marvin Sprague draws the foul. 52 to 48 and one minute and 55 seconds left. Steve Gown is at the free throw line. He hits. Incidentally, Moline High School won the cheerleaders championship, took home the cheerleaders trophy here at the state tournament. Moline High School cheerleaders. Gowan hits it again. 54 to 48 now. Collinsville out in front. Over to Sprague. Sprague shot is partially blocked. Coming across there to do it was Parker, and the deflected shot is grabbed by Collinsville. A minute and 35 left to play in the game. Collinsville keeping it moving. 
John Berger goes under, and as he shoots, John Buck. That's the ball out of bounds on the save for Quincy. Buck is going out now, and Jim Jenkins comes in, number 33. Sacrificing height for speed is Quincy. Dennis Pace just tries to tip it in on a high pass inbound. Quincy has the rebound. And as Sprague brings the ball down, he's fouled by Don Berger, number 52. One minute and 10 seconds. 54 to 48 as Collinsville leads by six points. This the battle for the state championship of 1965. Marvin Sprague on the line for Quincy. That is missed, and Dennis Pace gets the rebound for Collinsville. Collinsville back to ball control. We're in the final minute, 50 seconds to go. That's the Collinsville crowd, Jack. They can sense a state tournament in the offing, a championship. Pace tries to tip one over to Don Berger. Berger cut for the basket, and the ball sailed behind him out of bounds. 31 seconds left to play. 31 seconds to try and get six points in. For Quincy, that is quite a job. They've amazed us with the jobs they've done. I don't know whether anyone would be up to this, but Quincy calls for a timeout, and they're going to try and plan a course that can get them on even terms with Collinsville. John Buck is coming back into the ball game, the towering center for Quincy, number 41. He's a big boy, six feet eight, but he only comes in at about 180 pounds. Doesn't have the stamina to keep up a steady diet of play. But he comes in with enthusiasm, Jack. He bounced up to the scorer, and he said, Buck's back in. <laughs> there he is, John Buck. <laughs> All right for Quincy. How do you make six points in 31 seconds? They've got the ball. They've got to shoot. McMahon lets it go. There's two of them. 54 to 50. Collinsville holding out of the ball. A steal by Gary Thompson. Here he comes. 12 seconds. Sprague underneath. It's in. There's four of them. Eight, seven, six. Three, two, whistle blow, stopping the clock at two seconds. 54 to 52 is the score. Have they made a run at him, Jack Grease, or haven't? Rather. Timeout is called. Two seconds to play. Quincy 52, Collinsville 54. How do they do it, Tom? Jack, I don't know. I haven't seen any mirrors on the court here at the Assembly Hall at Champaign-Urbana. Carol Hanks has got an amazing basketball team, one that the city of Quincy must certainly be very, very proud of. The cardiac kids, if I've ever seen a set, and they have just kept coming and coming and coming and game after game after game. 16 seconds ago, they were down by four. Now they're down by two. 30 seconds ago, they were down by six. And here they are. Hailing by two. Now we're ready to resume play. Going to the free throw line after drawing the foul is Dennis Pace. And this is almost an automatic point. This brilliant shooter, six foot three and senior from Collinsville. 14 points so far in this game. And that's 15. 55 to 50. Pace has another shot coming. This is off to the side. And the gun sounds to end the ball. Collinsville wins the state championship 55 to 52 and look at them go wild. Surprise team, a 
1965. Collinsville, which came to the state tournament the last two years in a row and won the championship in 1961. Came into this year's competition with only one regular back from last season. So, Coach Virgil Fletcher built a team around defense. And you saw a tight defense all through this tournament play. And gradually, their strength began to tell. And the first thing you know, he had a championship contender. And tonight, you know, he's got the state championship. There's the final score. 55 to 52, Collinsville over Quincy. realization has arrived for the victors to receive tribute as the top ranking basketball team in the state. Let's join Al Willis, executive secretary of the Illinois High School Association for the presentation of the runner-up and championship trophies for this 58th high school tournament. teams we would be very remiss if we did not express our appreciation to all of you for the fine sportsmanship that you've given all of these uh, schools and these teams and we would certainly be remiss if we did not express our appreciation to the University of Illinois for the use of this facility to Mr. Douglas Mills and his staff for the arrangements here and for to Mr. Parkinson of the Assembly Hall for the arrangements that we have had here. They have been remarkable. And now to present the championship awards is Mr. Harry Fitzhugh, president of the Illinois High School Association and the superintendent of schools at Franklin, Illinois. Mr. Fitzhugh. Thank you, Mr. Willis. 736 high schools participated in this, the 58th annual Illinois High School Basketball Tournament. Yeah. The Illinois State Basketball Finals have risen to a high spot nationally, both in competitive value and spectator interest. The one lost record of the finalists in this year's tournament series, the 16 finalists, is very impressive. During the regular season of play, before the tournament series began, 15 of these 16 schools had won 21 or more games each, while the 16th won an even 20. We congratulate all of these schools. We are justly proud of the fine quality basketball which is played throughout the state of Illinois. We're also very proud of the fine coaching record which these men have. And a good example of this, of this fine, high-caliber coaching, has been done by Mr. Cheryl Hanks, the coach of the Quincy Blue Devils. <laughs> coach Hanks told us at the beginning of the year, and we read this in the newspaper column, that his team was going all the way. And his team did go all the way. And we like to think of this as not losing and being a second place loser, but a second place winner. It's a tremendous job of coaching by this fine coach. And coach Cheryl, we have here for you and your players some silver basketballs 
Congratulations for a job well done. The best of luck. We'd like for the Quincy captains to please come forward. The Quincy team, please. This is the 17th trip which the Quincy High School has made to the championship round at the University of Illinois. A fine Quincy team won the state championship in 1934. And in 1952, another fine Quincy team placed second. And in 1965, another exceptionally fine Quincy team has placed second. Congratulations, boys. Good going. Would you please come forward? <laughs> this fine coach has been at Collinsville for 19 years, and during this period of time, he has brought eight teams to Champaign. His team finished second in 1957 to a fine Heron Ball team. In 1961, one of the finest high school teams ever to play at the University of Illinois won the state championship. And now in 1965, history has repeated itself. Congratulations to you. A gold basketball for you and your players. Congratulations. Will the players please come forward? is on his way to Tournament Central to give you a summary on the championship games and then Tom Kelly will bring us an interview with the coach and members of the winning team. First, here again are Ed and Marilyn. You basketball fans have something to talk about tonight and now here's something to talk about that's a real bargain. That's right. Long distance rates are getting lower and lower and that means you can make people happy more often with a long distance call. Right, Polly? Right. <laughs> Look at this. They've cut long distance rates again. After 8 p.m., six days a week, and any time on Sunday, you can call anywhere in the United States for a dollar or less. What do you know? Any time Sunday. Let's see. Many early evening and Saturday rates are going down, too. All day Saturday, and from 6 to 8 p.m. on weekdays, you can call anywhere in the United States for a dollar fifty or less. That sure sounds like a bargain to me. On April 1st, daytime long-distance rates are going down, too, for station-to-station -to -station calls over 600 miles. 
From Illinois, you'll be able to call anywhere in the United States except Alaska and Hawaii for $1.90 or less on a three-minute call. Okay, we're all set now at Tournament Central. Vince Lloyd and I will have the summary of the championship game in a moment, then we'll be joining Tom Kelly for an interview with the 1965 state champions. First, let's switch to Marilyn and Ed. Well, you know, this marks the 14th year that Illinois Bell Telephone has brought you this great event on television. And over the years, your comments and criticisms have been very helpful to us. And we certainly hope that you'll drop us a line tonight or tomorrow and let us know how you think we've done. We'd like you to do that. Drop a card or a letter and send it to Illinois Bell, Box 6270, Chicago, Illinois. That's Illinois Bell, Box 6270, Chicago, Illinois. Okay, now here are Jack and Vince with a summary on the championship game. Well, this has been quite a night of basketball. The third place game was won by Marshall 66 to 59 over Thornton. The championship belongs to Collinsville 55 to 52 over Quincy. Quincy, which had been pulling the impossible throughout this tournament, couldn't quite do it against Collinsville, Floyd. I'll tell you something, Jack. No team has ever showed me as much courage or any more courage and any more uh, battling ability than Quincy did in that championship game there tonight. They, however, I thought they were just up against a team in Collinsville that overall, physically, was just too powerful, just too strong. That's right. A very strong team was played by Collinsville. And let's run through the scoring and summary. Dennis Pace scored 15 points, giving him a total for the four games of the tournament of 115, six short of equaling Ted Kayaz's mark of 121. Don Berger scored 11 points for Collinsville. Jack Darlington was high man on the evening with 16. The scoring for Quincy showed Bob McMahon on top with 14 points. Next, Gary Thompson with 13. Next, Kurt Gentleman with nine. The score at the half showed Collinsville with a four point lead, 24 to 20. The final score showed him with a five point lead, 55 to, uh, or a four point, three point lead, I should say, 55 to 52. And so that's the way it went, a thrilling, exciting 1965 state championship. Now for an interview with the 1965 champions, let's switch to Tom Kelly. Thank you, Jack Dreves, and it's getting to be almost old home week, fellas. We saw you here this afternoon. Congratulations to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 1965 state high school championship basketball team from Collinsville. And Keith Zarzel's got his arm wrapped around that uh, trophy over there, and I don't believe anybody will be able to get it away from him. This is young Mr. Mark Fletcher. How are you, Mark? All right. Pretty happy about this whole thing? Yes, I sure am. I forgot to ask you earlier today, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. Let me see. You'll be in uh, high school playing for Daddy when? How long will it take? Mm, about ten years. About ten years. <laughs> tell you, Mark, Daddy, get, Daddy's got plans for you long before ten years from now. That'll make you about 18. We better make it about uh, eight years from now, huh? Yes. Okay. Pretty happy about the whole thing, huh? I saw you out there practicing, doing a few layups. You go out there about 30 feet away and throw that ball in. What, what's your best shot? I don't know. Huh? You got all the moves, huh? Yeah. All the moves. And you're with the state champion. Congratulations, Mark. Nice talking to you. Son, if you'd move right down there, let me talk to some of these other lads. We met these boys this afternoon. I'll ask them to introduce themselves to you once again. Mike Vincent. Mike Vincent. Mike, we didn't find out whether you're a sophomore, junior, or what? I'm a senior. You're a senior? Yes, sir. And you're in a state championship club, and you've been here then three years straight, haven't you? No, uh, two years. Two years. Yeah, you made the trip. Arm. I see. Made the trip two years and finally got the big prize, huh? Yeah. Congratulations to you. A fine Thanks. victory. This young man. Mike Belbradick. Mike Belbradick. Yeah. You know, I had trouble with your name yesterday, Mike. Really, I did. A fellow named like Kelly having trouble with Belbradick. I don't know why. What year are you in school, Mike? I'm a junior. Sir. You're a junior. Back yeah. next year? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Right Another here. one of those things next year? <laughs> yes, sir. I see. <laughs> that pretty well takes care of that for 1966, I guess. Well, how about it, Mr. Zeisel? Yeah, we'll be back. Going to be back. <laughs> yeah, this is the rebuilding year. So this is, <laughs> doesn't say much for you seniors back there, does it? A rebuilding year and a state title holder. Wonderful. You've got a pretty good grip on that thing, Keith. Yes, sir. I'm not going to let it go for a while. Nobody gets away with the big trophy. Yeah? No, sir. Right, congratulations. Thank let you. me slide past here. Excuse my back, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, your name? Dennis Arnold. Dennis Arnold. We've seen you in action, Dennis. Congratulations on the win. Thank I you. suppose you're pretty pleased about it. Yes, sir, I sure am. What's your year in school? I'm a sophomore. You're a sophomore. Yes. That's a pretty big... Well, listen, uh, Virgil's <laughs> got some size. Come, this may be a rebuilding year. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. And your name? Bruce Evans. Bruce Evans. What year are you in school, Bruce? I'm a sophomore. You're a sophomore. Yeah. 
You go along with Keith? This is a rebuilding year? Yeah, I think so. We're back. We're ready. Two years now in a row, man. We're ready. You'll really show these seniors right. something, huh? Yes. Boys, congratulations. We'll look for you next year here at state tournament time. And don't drop that trophy. <laughs> now let me slide back here and visit with um, a gentleman who's mighty pleased and... Well, I guess pleased as punch should be a, a pretty good phrase. Frank Patol, assistant coach. Frank, congratulations. Yes, sir. Isn't this wonderful? It certainly is. Uh, this is, I guess, a wire-to-wire -wire finish for this ball club and, and uh, a real fine basketball team. Coach Fletcher told us earlier in the tournament that it was a pretty dedicated group of boys. Yes, sir. Yes, and they sir. like to feature defense, and that's probably the toughest thing to play. Well, they love it, and then they get out there and do it, and they get the job done. I might add that this group here... Uh, uh, is accustomed to winning. They've been undefeated as sophomores, undefeated as juniors, and they got the big prize this year, although they did lose two games. So some of these boys have lost very few games while they've played basketball. That's right. And they had a great, great state tournament. Frank, oh, that's thank terrific. you. Thank Congratulations you. to you. Thank you. Let's meet Mr. Parker here. How are you tonight? Oh, fine. Uh -huh. hey, you're pretty hot this afternoon. I had kind of a whole cold hand a little bit this evening, though. Yeah, I was going to let Denny do the work tonight. I but, uh... see. <laughs> Mr. Pace, he's referring to Dennis, uh, the young lad who fell just seven short of setting a brand new four-game scoring mark. We'll get to Dennis in just a bit. He had a comment about that that you'll be into. I think kind of tells you what kind of a young man this, this Mr. Pace is. Mr. Parker, you're a senior. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, you couldn't go out a better way, could you? No, I don't think we could. Not uh -huh. much better. Fine basketball game. Beat a very good ball club, too. Yes, we did. And they really came, kept coming at you all the time. But yeah. you were there. Congratulations, Harry. Thank you. We talked this young man. This is Mr. Berger, and he's part of the rebuilding plans. He's the only junior on this starting uh, lineup. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. You look forward to a, a tournament here next year, perhaps? Yeah, we'll be back. Oh, we're going to be back? Yeah. Sure. Pretty definite about things down Collinsville Way. Congratulations yeah. to you, Don. Thank you. Now let's talk to Mr. Dennis Pace. Dennis, uh, congratulations on the tournament. Thank you, sir. And uh, your victory. And I might add, and I think Coach Fletcher will probably agree, this kind of tells you what just the sort of young man this Dennis Pace is. Uh, I said, too bad you fell seven short. And he said, it's all right, we got this. And he reached out and touched the trophy. You had a great tournament nonetheless. And uh, you're still the best 6'3 shooting center I've seen in a long time, Dennis Pace. Congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. Pleasure watching you play. Good luck to you. You're a senior. Here's a man uh, played guard in the football team, plays a lot of guard in the basketball team, Mr. Gowan. Yes, sir. Had a nice tournament. Yes, sir, we did. You stayed in this ball game, didn't you? Yes, fall sir, out I stayed tonight. in this one. I had huh? to. Uh-huh, that's right. Beat a pretty good ball club? Yes, see? we did. They were a real good ball club. Uh-huh. Were, were you a little bit just tense at the last uh, few seconds there when you're ahead by six and suddenly only by two? No, I don't think so. We've came back before, and I knew we'd do it again. Uh -huh. Play a fine basketball game. Congratulations Thank to you. you. And the captain of the Cahawks, Darlington, he's got to be an awful good guard. This boy drives and gets two. He shoots from outside. Pretty steady performer, brings the ball up the floor. Captain, congratulations. Thank you very much. It's uh, awful nice to be captain of a state... Uh, championship ball club, isn't it? It sure is. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Been a great season for you and a great tournament. Want to wish you a lot of success and a lot of luck, Jack. It's a pleasure watching you play. Thank you very Good much. Good luck to you. Thank you. And now let's meet the coach of the state champions. This, of course, is Virgil Fletcher. Virg, congratulations. Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. You they were great out there, weren't they? They certainly yeah. were, coach. And beat a great ball club. That's right. That's right. They, uh, it was a good game all the way, and we knew we'd have to hustle to win the ball game. It was just an exciting tournament from start to finish, and of course, your Cahawks were a most important part of it. You told Jack Drees earlier in our telecast that this was a dedicated ball club, and I think you, you based that primarily on the fact that this team likes to play defense, and that requires dedication that, and hard that's, work. That's right. You also told Jack you didn't think you'd be here when the whole year started, Bert. Well, this team is, uh, has come a long way. They've improved, and as I said, I told Jack, uh, they've surprised us every time they stepped on the floor, uh, including in this whole tournament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They never seem to lose their poise, cool. That's right. They're, uh, they're a real good ball club. And they seem to have a great sense of where that basketball is when you put your press in operation. Well, we play what we call a ball press, and uh, we're after that ball all the time, and I think that's a little bit different from the zone press as many t as schools mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. You play both ends of the floor, too. That's right. Coach, congratulations. Well, nice so. tournament victory for you, and the boys say it's just a rebuilding year. You'll be back uh, next year. Uh, we're very happy to win it this year. Our congratulations to you again. Thank right, you thank very, you very much, much, Virgil, for being with us. Well, there you have them, the state championship basketball team from Collinsville and the very fine coach, Virgil Fletcher. And the final score again was 55 to 52 as Collinsville defeated a fine Quincy basketball team. They ended up in second place. Now, let's go to Ed McMahon and the pretty Marilyn Vandiver. <laughs> well, thanks, Tom. You know, it's just about time for us to say good night. And so, on behalf of Illinois Bell, we hope you've enjoyed this year's telecast of the Illinois High School Association Basketball Tournament. And we do hope we've left you with something to talk about in the way of rate reductions and new and improved services that can make your telephone service more enjoyable, convenient, and economical. 
Again, thank you for watching. And Marilyn, thank you very much. A delight to work oh, with I you. I loved working with you. Thank we you. We also, I guess, should thank uh, Polly for all the help with the props and all the cues. Thank you, Polly. Ah, you're quite welcome, Ed Marilyn. And it was my pleasure. <laughs> and best wishes to all of you from Illinois Bell. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it from here. So hope to see you soon, friends. Good night. Good night. And thanks to you, Marilyn Vandiver, and to Ed McMahon, and to all of you, you uh, we certainly hope that you've enjoyed this basketball tournament as much as we have. Jack, I guess that almost wraps it up. I think it does, Vince. But all I can add is our congratulations to Collinsville High School, the champions for 1965. And our congratulations, too, to all the teams that took part in this 58th state championship tournament. Our administrative engineers here in Champaign-Urbana have been Charles Rothers and Jack Myers. Production manager, Leroy Oliger. Fred Brown, Dick Flanders, and Don Struppel were our assistant directors. Our associate director has been Jack Jacobson. The director of this telecast has been Jim Holmes. And now this is Jack Drees along with Tom Kelly and Vince Lloyd wishing you good night for all your friends and neighbors at Illinois Bell. By the way, Holly the Parrot wants to thank her handler Bruce Newton for helping her to appear tonight. This telecast has been produced for Illinois Bell Telephone by NW Air. Our producers have been Jim Robertson, Ray Girardin, Ted Schulte, and Bob Malat. Our executive producer, Rick Hawley. Portions of this program were mechanically reproduced. This has been a presentation of WGN Television Sports.